Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor. I'm very excited today because we have Sander Vensti here today, and he is an amazing individual. He has a really amazing story to tell. And he, right now, um, he, he was going to go and become a veterinarian back in the day, and he found his true purpose in life. And he's going to share that purpose with you and how he took his purpose and made it into a reality. And so, Sander, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Thank you, Stacy. Yes. So when I, when I was younger, I've always had a deep love for animals. So it wasn't a surprise to me or my parents like that. I wanted to do something with animals growing up. I, that was always uh, a North Star for me. So then I wasn't sure if it was farming or veterinary medicine. And, and as soon as there was any sort of doubts, my parents were like, you got to go explore veterinary medicine. Make sure that, like, that you go down that road first because it, farming is tough. So you can't have any doubts in your mind when, when things start getting tough in farming. And uh, when you have bad days, stuff like that, you, you can't live a life with regret and what ifs and stuff like that. So I went to the veterinary medicine route. I went to University of Guelph and I did everything that I need to do to get my application ready. And instead of sending it in, I changed my mind and came home to the dairy farm instead. So then that was 2010 when I graduated. And basically, we farmed together, my parents, for four or five years. And then 2015, we moved our, our cows into a new dairy facility, which was very exciting because I found it endlessly frustrating in our old dairy facility because that barn was built in, in 1987. And they didn't really know much about how a barn should be built for a cow to thrive. And they didn't. They didn't thrive. So it was endlessly frustrating for me being passionate about animals as I am. So when they... We moved them over to the new barn. The cows thrived. They did better. They they produced more milk. They they lived longer. They had better body condition. They seemed happier. Like it was it was amazing. But right around that same time, as the cows' health improved, ironically, my own health um, took a hit, and my hormones crashed, and I had to look around. Like, what am I doing wrong? What am I missing? Why all of a sudden now is at the age of twenty five? has my testosterone crashed to nothing, basically to like nine year old man levels. And then I started looking around and I was questioning everything. I was questioning the healthcare system because I was bouncing around from doctor to doctor and no way was able to figure out what was actually wrong. I had doctors telling me that I need to just accept my condition and move on, stop trying to look for things that I can change or improve or things like that. It's just, I just need to accept it and, and move on with my life. And naturally I wasn't, willing to do that. But then it took me about six years though, to finally figure out enough things where I was able to improve my own health to the point where my hormones returned. And, um, and then, but then at that same time, I was, I was questioning my life. I was also questioning the way we farmed. And as I, I was looking for ways that I could improve the lives of our farm animals and do things better. And, Going down that rabbit hole is what led me to regenerative agriculture. Is uh, it's a lot, a lot of the goals are aligned when it comes to trying to improve animal welfare and the the goals of regenerative agriculture and, and getting the cows back outside in the environment where they can have a positive impact on the environment. And so where we are now is like I I have my commercial dairy farm which I still have lots of plans, lots of dreams of transitioning that to regenerative agriculture as well. But in the meantime. I'm trying to build that customer base and I have the pasture turkeys that I have on our pasture that follow behind our grass fed beef is kind of mimics the the ways that the the massive herds of bison used to roam North America and then there'd be birds following behind there and they complement each other really well which is a common theme in regenerative agriculture where you kind of treat your farm like a, an ecosystem and it's a lot of give and take and and, and uh, a lot of complementary traits between the different animals and, and the goals of, uh, of of producing food on your farm. You know, I, I don't think people realize how common, um, har you know, problems with hormones, um, how many people go through it, how many people go through low testosterone or low progesterone, or they have low estrogen or their estrogen is too high and people are really imbalanced in our society. And it does, it could start at any age. When people think about um, low testosterone, they immediately associate it with later in life, but it's not really true. Like I started having problems with my testosterone at age 39 and I didn't even know what was going on. I just started getting symptoms out of the blue 
And, you know, I went to the doctor and my doctor was the same as yours, you know, just, you know, didn't have an answer. Yeah, just take birth control. You'll be fine. And I'm like, I'm not taking birth control, you know. And then later on, I, I went to other doctors that were more natural and, you know, and they, you know, did tests and they figured out what was going on. But a lot of it, you know, in our society, people don't realize, but a lot of it has to do too with the foods we eat, you know, in America, because, you know, especially, you know, a lot of foods are injected with hormones. And, you know, nowadays you see children at the age of eight starting to develop breasts and starting to go through menstruation at an early age because they're injecting, you know, they're injecting the chickens with hormones and they're injecting certain animals with hormones and, and they're injecting, you know, cows with hormones. And, those hormones are going into your body and they're changing the whole chemistry of your body. And, you know, and like we discussed before, you know, everybody's body is different. We all come from different DNA. So, you know, for some people going through, you know, low testosterone at a, at a young age is, can be normal and it, it doesn't, it can happen at any age, you know, and that's what people have to be aware of. And, you know, problems like, you know, low libido or erectile dysfunction is so common in our society worldwide. It's just not talked about, but, you know, as we were discussing before, you were talking about regenerative ag and you were talking about how the different foods and how, you know, eating certain foods and, and how to take care of the animals and, and take care of your bodies can play such a huge role. Can you explain a little bit more about aggregate? Uh, agri um, regenerative ag, you know, and, and explain to people what it is and how it could have such an impact on your health. Very simply, regenerative agriculture is just farming in a way that maximizes soil health. And that's in contrast to just trying to maximize profits or maximize efficiency. But if you take that like a, a layer deeper, a little more complex, what you're really trying to do is you're trying to create a thriving ecosystem of microorganisms in the soil and it's a, you have when it's done properly you have a, a very complex food chain of these microorganisms you have your bacteria you have your fungus you have protozoa nematodes arthropods and it's a real it's a crazy amount of biomass underneath the soil that we don't even realize is there but when you have that and, you, and it's done correctly what, you, what the plant then can do is that it can excrete a sugar into the soil and trade those sugars for nutrients. So then you don't need the synthetic fertilizers because the plant can ask for nutrients from the microorganisms in the soil and they'll go out and they'll mine these nutrients from the rocks and from the silt and sand and, and then they'll they'll trade those and then they'll be able to, for the sugars so that, so that the microorganisms can thrive. That, that's their food source. And the, it, it, the, it's um, and like what's really important in this whole system, like a keystone species, is the mycorrhizal fungi, which is basically a long filament that actually embeds into the root of the plant and reaches out into the soil and transports these nutrients and these sugars. And um, what actually happens is is when we're when we use these synthetic fertilizers or we use things like large equipment to drive over our land, these fungus are the first to die off. They're very sensitive. So we have to be careful with how we treat our land. But then what we can do is, is we, we follow these five principles of soil health, which are very important because you can, if you follow these five principles, then you, you, you don't have this negative impact on the soil and you don't, you don't kill all this diversity in your soil because if you don't have that diversity, you end up being addicted to synthetic fertilizers. There's really no other way to grow crops because without this, this uh, relationship between the microorganisms and the plant, the plant can't get the nutrients without fertilizer. And it's not just the fertilizer and the nutrients that the plant is missing. It's missing the defense chemicals from all the all the 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 insects and stuff like that so then if it doesn't have these defense chemicals from these healthy insects well then it becomes vulnerable for pests and then you end up spraying with pesticides and it's the same story with weeds if you don't have the diversity not only of the microorganism but also just the the plants that are are, are in the soil you 
that's uh, one of the main downsides of these monocrops is that you're missing that diversity that is missing in the soil and the nature doesn't like that monocrop. So then that's when the weeds come in and you start spraying for weeds. And then and it's it's a, a vicious cycle, really. And yeah, it's a hard thing to break free from. And when you're following five of these five principles, which is like you, you need the biodiversity, you need to minimize the impact that you have on your soil. You have to have armor on the soil in the form of plants or pasture or whatever else. And you need to have living roots in the soil all year round. And the last thing is you need animal impact. And if you have those five things, you can have that diversity where you you can break free from that addiction. And then you can have that beautiful relationship between these microorganisms and the plants. And it's not just, oh, and now I don't need synthetic fertilizer. It's, it's, it's a much, you end up with, uh, much more nutrient dense food because you can never fertilize for absolutely everything that the every micronutrient that the plant wants and needs that it can find in the soil. You can never fertilize for all those tiny micronutrients. So like you end up with much like with food that has less nutrients in it for that reason. So it's 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 a it's a beautiful system and then the end result is as a nutrient healthy nutrient dense food. You know, it's it's pretty amazing because it it seems like when you do regenerative, you know, agriculture, it seems like you're for one, you're balancing your gut because you're you're you know you have the good bacteria, the bad bacteria, you have the healthy soil, and you're 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 you know that helps your digestive system work, which in, entail helps everything. It helps you know because gut health is really related to everything, including your brain. And, you know, the fogginess, the way we think, our clarity, you know, overall health. And that's one of the components that it seems like it really helps. And, you know, because when you think about it, you know, if when if you if once you start adding those pesticides and those weeds and all those toxins into your body, your body doesn't know what to do with them. So it stores them and it stores it in our body. And what happens is, is that our body you know, our, our, our organs become sluggish. It affects the way, you know, we feel it, you know, it could cause illness, you know, after, after so long and people are going to the doctors, they don't understand why they don't feel good. And it all has to do with the root cause of how the food is made, how it's grown, how it's taken care of. And people are getting sick all over, you know, the United States. And, and I don't know what the regulations are, in other countries, but for the United States, there's so many illnesses and, and Ill illnesses, the percentages have grown and grown and grown. And so many people, you know, have realized that a lot of it has to do with gut health, leaky gut syndrome, not having enough of, you know, good bacteria versus bad bacteria. And it all has to do with a lot of the way we take care of ourselves. We take care of the food that we're growing. And it's, it's really, you know, it's really hurting our society. It's, you know, we talked about, you know, our hormones and we talked about, you know, gut health and, and, and illnesses. And it's really, it all draws back to really, we need to have concern of how we are growing our food and really how, you know, what we're doing, because it's affecting our society as a whole. And it's really, it's, it's destroying the health of people you know, nationwide and, and, and any other countries that are doing similar things. Absolutely. And, and like there, you're right there, there's a, um, a huge issue with autoimmunity in our day and age today. And a lot of it comes back to the food we eat, but also like a lifestyle of sanitation where we're obsessed with, um, out putting alcohol in our hands and cleaning everything and making everything perfectly clean and yeah. disinfected. And, and um and it, and it starts with the food and like the soil because like the soil we farm it in a way typically with commercial agriculture where it's it's almost a sanitary soil there's bacteria but there's such there's so, it's so devoid of life it's almost like a sanitized growing environment and then it's this those those lack of diversity comes up through the food chain and so the plants don't have the healthy microbiome on it as well so then it's like it, because there's not the microbiome, there's a void there. So then there's as soon as you have something growing, some E. coli or some some sort of unhealthy bacteria, it will explode in population because there's not the competition of the healthy bacteria, yes. the healthy microorganisms 
on that food. So then it becomes even more important that we sanitize our food. So like, yeah, it's in, in like, like people talk about too, like how it's important, like you eat your food, dirty food and stuff like that with some dirt on it. So you have those, those microorganisms, but it's like, it's not that simple because you got to make sure it's the right dirt. It's the right. dirt with the healthy diversity, the healthy ecosystem of microorganisms in it. And then, and then we can like fix the whole, the, not only the food system with the, with the microbiome and, but also just like our, our, our culture of sanitation, because like, it's, it's incredibly important because if you look at our body, we are more bacteria than we are human. We yeah. were vessels for carrying this, this diverse population of, of bacteria in our pot, in our, in our, in our body. So like, we have to be careful too, with like a lot of these pesticides and, and, and herbicides or sprays that we would put on our food or, or sanitize our, our hands with or whatever else is like, it might not affect our human cells, but like it could very well be affecting our microbiome. And oh, then, and then leave all the issues. Yeah, you know, and and they they come out with you know information about you know everyone was you know hand sanitized, especially during COVID, and everybody's using it. But you know, too much hand sanitizer hand sanitizer is not good for you. You know, it's really we the germs are good for you. You know, people don't realize it, but we need germs. We need to grow. You know, our antibodies. We need we need you know just like when they say take a probiotic, you should be taking a prebiotic too because good bacteria versus bad bacteria. You, you need both. You need both in your body. And, you know, people don't realize that. And then, you know, and in America we have, you know, chickens are getting shot up with nitrate and they're getting shot up with all these different, you know, chemicals and things. And, and you know, we as a society really need to try to go more the pure route, like you were talking about, regenerative ag and and be able to have a cleaner, you know, way of living. Because if we don't, where we're going to our, our country health wise is going to be destroyed it's already you see stats of, of how much you know pe illnesses have gone up in so many different categories and the question is why you know and you know our society is not looking at what they're putting in their bodies and we were talking about before the show you really need to treat your body as a temple and maybe you can expand on that, explain to people why it is so important that we just don't throw things in our mouths and we just don't take anything that we see over the counter, you know, but we, we treat our body as a temple. Yeah. It's something that, uh, I believe in very strongly is cause like you, you gotta look after your meat bag is how I like to think about it because <laughs> like it's, it, it, it makes you more effective at everything you do in life. It yeah. makes makes me a better dad, a better husband. It makes me a, a better farmer. It gives me more energy, more clarity and thought. It allows me to dream of of directions I want to take my life, like like with the with more elites and make an impact on agriculture and improve animal welfare and 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 also like move bring the, the movement of regenerative agriculture forward. Like it all that health is is absolutely critical to uh just to be ourselves but like 100 percent ourselves not just walking through life and 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 waking up and, and hitting the snooze button and going through life as, as a zombie and just hit being on repeat like it's it's absolutely critical yeah and like and the food that we eat is a big part of that it's um it's we almost gotta like it's it's we gotta go back to eating a, a simpler diet, kind of. It's like it's not all these complex ingredients and packages and stuff like that. It's like it's just your one ingredient, and and uh, and and that's real food. And then the step beyond that is like the food that you eat. That's simple. It's just one ingredient. It's just your whole foods. It's nothing packaged. A step beyond that, then is like okay. Now that I've made that massive leap away from processed foods, the next step is okay. Now the food that I'm eating is that top quality food is that also food that's raised in a way that makes it so that it's it's nutrient dense it's healthy and it has it's not only healthy but it's it's improves animal welfare or it improves the environment like it it's it's uh it's treated in a way that is that is 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 healthy for the whole ecosystem as us as a whole and yes. our planet as a whole Oh, a hundred percent. I agree with you totally. 
and 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 it you know it, it's a lifestyle change it's not just something you're going to do temporarily and then you know okay uh you know like just like people go on these fad diets yeah after a while they get sick of doing it and they go back to their old way uh, of living it's something that you have to incorporate into your life and 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 stay consistent you know i don't think of you know i don't look at it as as a, things as a diet i don't look at things as you know this is the way it has to be i i call it a lifestyle change do you want to be healthy do you want to feel good do you want to prevent illness from occurring do you want to sustain your illness that you have right now do you want to keep it at a level where you could be productive and happy you know do you want to be able to live life the way you've always dreamt of being do you want to have goals in the future and be able to reach those goals well people don't realize it but it all stems back on how we take care of ourselves and what we put in our bodies and it's so important that people realize that every little thing whether it's a supplement a vitamin you know the food that we eat you know, whether it be natural or processed, you have to really think about what am I putting in my body and how is that going to affect me? And, you know, and, and make it so natural that you do it so consistently that you don't even have to think about it anymore. It's just, you, you're just doing it. You're just doing it, you know? And I, I think people have to really seriously think about that how is it affecting their life? People have stomach issues and they and they're not digesting food well and they're going to a gastrologist and you know, I'm having all these problems. Oh, well, what are you eating? Well, I had a pizza yesterday and then I you know in the morning I had a bowl of cereal and it had like you know you know this enormous amount of sugar in it you know and and you know people don't get it but we really have to focus where we're getting our foods and what we're putting in our mouths. And, and think about the more natural way of living and how that could benefit us in the long run, I think. What are your feelings about that? I Yeah, I completely agree. And we have to be careful that we're not trapped by normal, like all the normal ranges for your blood. Yes. Work, mm -hmm. All the normal diet, that can't be what's causing you. That's, that's a normal diet for you to be eating. But you know what? It's also normal to die at the age of 60, 75, 80 from a cardiovascular disease, cancer, and all these chronic diseases that um, are arguably preventable with a healthy lifestyle and exercise and a healthy diet. And like, you got to almost beware of normal because if you really look at what normal is, that's not a happy road to walk down. I don't want yeah. to start losing vitality by the age of 65 because that's retirement age and it's normal to have a sore body and an achy body and a and and be incapable of doing the things that I want to do with my life now and it's it's normal to now take a step back and no longer have big dreams because that that's what normally happens like beware of normal be, yeah. and, and and it starts with every single day with your daily choices like are you eating the with the normal diet that's leading people down this road, this that this unhappy road, really, are you making the normal choices that's going to lead you down that road as well, or should you now do an overhaul of your pantry and have instead of your your packaged food for snacks, you have some piece of fruit or something like that, like have some have healthy habits, and it all comes back to habits. Yes, and like it, it becomes easy. Once you these you form these healthy habits, these, these these things that become normal for your your new life, where you're cooking your own food, you're buying food from the perimeter of the grocery store, and like you're having simple snacks that are just one ingredient. There's nothing in a package, and you don't stop and and buy that takeout because it's convenient. It's like it's now normal that oh I can just fast. Like you can fast and not eat for a couple of days, and and you'll be fine. It's crazy. <laughs> and 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 like you don't have to stop as soon as you have a hunger pang you can you can drive and you can wait till you come home you can have a piece of fruit and then you can cook something up that's healthy right these are all habits that you can form and then like you said it's not a diet it's a lifestyle it's it's a way of life where you it's in in where you do this long term for the rest of your life and then so when you can go down a road that's abnormal that's abnormally amazing abnormally healthy with lots of vitality 
Yes. And it's so true. And, you know, it's, it's all, it's all mental how, you know, what we put in our head and how we react to things is how we feel. If you start taking care of your body and you're, and you start feeling good, you're in your head, you're going to feel young, you know, and, and that in itself, because we're all connected, mind, body, and soul, it's all connected. So if you're taking care of your body, you're feeling good, you're feeling young, you know, and it's in your head. I feel great. I feel like a 30 year old. You could be 65, but you feel like you're 30. You're going to act like you're 30, you know, and yeah, it's all you dreams then too. You're going to keep making dreams. Yeah. If, if your body feels good, your mind feels clear, then you can keep having those big dreams. Even when you're 65, when you're so normal to be retiring, like you could have big dreams still. You can, you could strive for an amazing life. Exactly. Life does not end because the, the quote unquote, you know, in our normal society, you retire at 65. Well, that means, you know, life is over. You have to sit on a couch and, you know, watch soap operas all day. No, you know, it's all how you perceive it. You know, it's how you take care of yourself. It's what you put in your mind. It's, you know, you could change the way you think, the way you live, the way you everything, you know, all by, you know, creating that healthy lifestyle. Now, you know, I, I want to just tap into, you know, talking about the hormone issues, because I feel like it's such a huge issue, you know, especially in the United States and all over, because I've spoken with people that are just not from the United States all over the world that have had these issues and have contacted me, you know, having, you know, low testosterone, having low progesterone, having low libido and, and going through erectile dysfunction and they just don't know what to do. And, you know, you see on the counters, like a lot of times you'll go into food stores or you'll go into, you know, pharmacies and you'll see tons and tons of bottles, you know, all, you know, boost your testosterone, do this, you know, great muscles and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, and all this stuff and all these promises, you know, but it, you know, there are, there are, you know, a lot of these things are not good for you. And when you, when, you know, our, our whole body is run by hormones. So you have to be very careful, just like we talked about treating your body like a temple. When you play around with hormones, you have to be really, really careful. You know, I, I went to a functional medicine doctor, you went to a natural path, you know, we, we were monitored by a professional. I know that I had to take consistent blood tests and, you know, they had to make sure everything was leveled properly. And because you know what, if you have too much of something, it could throw your whole body off in many ways. And, you know, I don't know how you feel, but when you went to the natural path, that was the finally, you know, everybody else told you, don't worry about it, just live with it, you know, suck it up, you know, but what was the turning point when you went to that, that natural path that helped you, you know, get your life back in that area of your life? The real thing that the naturopath gave me was optimism because everywhere else I spoke with, it was, it was just hormone therapy, hormone replacement therapy. And, and there was never any talk of lifestyle. It was just, these are the drugs that you should take and you should accept that and move on. And, and the the unique thing about the naturopath is like, they, they said, I asked them like, this is what, what I'm dealing with. This is what the doctors tell me. Do you think I could fix this? And they're the the only people that said, "Yeah, you could. You could totally." I like I I they saw a road to recovery, and like it gave me a glimmer of hope when uh, I wasn't really getting much of that from anywhere else. So, and they they helped me with like with uh, like a little more concrete things too. Like I uh, I had digestive issues, and along with digest digestive issues is as I had a B twelve deficiency because you. I couldn't absorb those B vitamins from my food. Yeah. So I took some B12 for a short period of time and that helped a little bit. Um, and then uh, they also like pointed out to me like, hey, these are probably the foods that you're are reacting to. You can try to avoid these certain foods that are causing you to, to flare up your immune system and have this inf inflammation throughout your body. And I tried that too and and uh, it definitely helped. And then uh, I this got me down walking down that path. And I started reassessing everything as far as health, like my sleep habits. Like I was I definitely 
um, I grew up in a household of, of, of three brothers and, um, and, and no sisters and, 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 and a hardworking dad. So it was like, it was a real, uh, the environment of just like, go get it and work hard and, and, um, to hell the consequences kind of thing. Like you're young now, <laughs> you go fight for the, for the future that you want to have. Like I was all for like that, that mindset came naturally to me. It's the way I grew up. It's yeah. just your, that grit and that hard work and push through and, tired doesn't matter you I can I can handle it kind of thing and um and that's just it, it came so naturally to me and I think that's part of the reason why I struggle I didn't have this opposing force this whole other part of my personality wasn't being wasn't being developed to the same degree as the hard part of my of my personality the softer side of myself I I was not developing to the same degree and, and, and that's a, a real inflection point in my life when I, when I got sick, is like, what am I missing? And then that's when I started looking at these softer sides of my personality. And surprisingly enough, exercise for me was part of that because it felt like a form of self-expression. Yeah. Exercise before, because I had a physical job. Any sort of exercise is a waste of energy. That could be energy that could put to getting work done, physical yeah. work. Like taking the time to to really focus on myself and like and like improve my 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 movement patterns so that I wouldn't have all these achy joints. My body hurt and like all my joints hurt. I couldn't walk without pain anymore. I couldn't even run at all anymore. It was so restricting all this pain that I was constantly trying to force my th force myself through my day, through all this pain and discomfort and just tired and brain fog. And, and it's, it's just like, it, it's, it's tough because it's not one simple feeling or one simple diagnosis or one simple issue that you're having it's like you said the hormones they affect your whole body so it's, it's a long list of insignificant symptoms that add up to like i feel like an old man yeah and I have my energy levels like my immune system's not working i had warts in my thumb and like i tried treating it it wouldn't go away it would just spread right and, and then so like yeah, I was, I was focusing. All, I was trying to a lot of different things. Things that really helped was like really improve my diet, simplifying my diet, get eating those whole foods, and uh, getting enough meat in my diet made a difference too. Because yeah, in that, I got sick. the The vegan movement was massive, and it seems hypocritical as a dairy farmer to try the vegan diet. But I was desperate. I was willing to try anything, so I did. And and there's things that I did improve. With with like my diet did improve to some degrees because I had a lot of the whole plant foods, but I really started feeling much more vitality when I started adding a lot of those animal products back in and and eating a lot of meat and a lot of dairy, raw dairy, because I'm one of the few people in Canada that can have raw dairy because I produce it myself. It's legal for me to consume it. And because like the the pasteurized, more processed dairy I was reacting to. Right. It was it was the thing that was triggering my immune system but i can drink liters and liters of raw milk without issues so that's added that back to my diet and that really helped as well as well as fasting my hormones never returned for six years straight and and it's frustrating because i was i constantly was building these healthy habits and my hormones haven't returned yet and it's almost can be tough to keep going when you're in that place but it's like when you're sick you almost have to push your body to the extreme and and to to allow it the permission to re, to relax and recover and allow you to bring your hormones back. But like for me, is like the last triggering moment that allowed my body to relax was uh, I did a prolonged fast, the first one I ever did. After that, it was it was two and a half to three days, something like that. I'm never really too picky, dogmatic about it, or too strict. But it's like two and a half, three mm -hmm. days, something like that. And after that, my hormones improved. My they came back, and I wasn't taking hormones anymore. And it never gets old being healthy. Like, cause like you can, you can have all sorts of dreams in your life, but like, as soon as you get sick, you only have one. Yeah. So like, it's, it's such a, a weight lifted off my shoulder and uh, to, to be healthy again. You know, I, it's, it's, it's wonderful once you start feeling better again. Cause I, I went from, you know, being so young and feeling so old, I couldn't even get myself out of bed. I was so fatigued and I could, I couldn't focus. My moods were all over the board. Everything was changing about me. And, you know, it was amazing because like, 
you know, there's so many tests out there now. They got DNA tests, they got hair tests, they have certain food, you know, tests where they could tell you, you know, what food you can eat, what food you can have moderately and what food you need to stay away from because your body might not be agreeing with certain foods, but you're not having a physical reaction. You know, you're not getting bumps or a rash, but you're, you're getting all these symptoms inside and you don't understand why, but your body is not agreeing with the foods that you're putting in your body. And, you know, I, I did for me personally, I, I did hormone therapy and then they tested all my vitamins and, and they tested all my, um, you know, what I was lacking and they put me on certain supplements and they put me on certain vitamins that I was deficient in. And I also started to do different supplements that rejuvenated the cells in your body. And because the old, the older you get, and when you start to go into like the perimenopause and you start to slow down your libido, your body is not the same anymore. And your cell production is, is slower. Everything is starting to get deficient. And, you know, I was taking pomegranate. I was taking the, the, you know, both, both extract and, and the, uh, and the, and the pomegranate itself. And that helped with the rejuvenation of, of cells and, and a lot of other little things and just eating certain foods. And like you said, sleep, people don't realize it, but sleep is a huge factor. And so is stress, learn how to cope with stress. And I love how you brought up about exercise because exercise is not just about, you know, gaining muscle strength, you know, you can let out a lot of steam and you can, and it makes you feel good about yourself and it really can help you, you know, it makes you feel good about yourself. You get less, you know, it takes that stress level down and you start to feel more focused and it, it also gives you a good, you know, um, view of the day. Like, wow, I accomplished this. I got this done. I feel good, you know, and, you know, it puts you on a different pathway of, of mentally thinking. So, you know, I, I think exercise and, and, and sleep are two major uh, factors. Cause I, I started to make sure that I got, I incorporated enough of sleep and some people don't even realize it, but when they're going through this stuff, a lot of people suffer from insomnia. So then, you know, there's different ways that you could focus on to try to help with insomnia that are natural, that are out there as well. But sleep is important. You need those eight hours of sleep and, and just a little bit of exercise and walking around a lake or just, you know, going outside and taking a walk down the road. Things like that is is all you need. You don't have to be like w w lifting, you know, 60 pound weights and, you know, going on the exercise bike for an hour and a half. You could be doing simple things and they could have a huge impact on your body. So I think it's like, you know, I learned what my body needed and I learned what my body didn't want. And once I started staying away from what my body didn't want, when I started incorporating everything that I needed, I started feeling the change. Was that something similar, you know, that that you felt as well? Yeah, for me, it's the same, but different. Like it's uh, like the thing I was saying before, like, like the path of the naturopath, like it's, uh, they told me the B12, they told me the foods I needed to avoid. Like, and those things helped a lot. Um, but eventually the B12 didn't make much of a difference anymore as I was trying to uh, like had less inflammation and stuff like that. And the things that made the biggest impact on my health was just the very simple things like 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 the sleep like and my sleep's not perfect now i got four young boys and they keep me up <laughs> hours the day and night and um but it's it's like i have enough other healthy habits i think that now i i'm able to handle a little bit of uh lack of sleep but yeah. i prioritize my sleep whenever i can and i i have the naps when i need to and um and uh, i'm getting through with with not as much sleep as i would like but like for me, the big things was just like, and and there's clues in your life as far as what to focus on. Um, for example, like the things that you dread the most quite often, that's a hint. Like, why do I dread that? For example, like when I was in, in the depth of 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 uh, of feeling like an old man, like I was almost fearful of being cold, which is a problem because I live in Canada. It gets pretty cold. Yeah. And, <laughs> I, I I dreaded getting out of the shower and it's like uh, my body was often cold I have um in my family there's a, a, a long line of, of rhinos like where your your blood circulation shuts off in your extremities mm -hmm. and it gets a little bit cold and then it gets extremely cold because the blood circulation is yeah. shut off painful and and uh you can have all sorts of damage to your to your to your, to your skin and stuff like that with a lack of blood flow but it's like that's something I struggle with constantly and it got to the point where I almost had symptoms of anxiety around going outside and and 
and and doing the work that I need to do on a daily basis. So I started doing cold showers and believe me, the amount of stress that I felt getting (laughs) that water is is (laughs) insane, but I stuck with it. And like, I learned so much about my body in the meantime, not only did I get healthier and, and um, because like the, the benefits that people often talk about, like I, revitalize the mitochondria in my body because the mitochondria are the heat producing parts of your cells yeah of your, your body. and like and like like they produce heat and energy so like i had more energy throughout my whole day because of it but like also things like once you get into that cold water you have to try to control your your stress response control your breathing and i was never really aware of my breathing before right and, I, and so like when i took what i learned trying to get into the cold water and to to what stressed breathing felt like and how to control that and now what relaxed breathing feels like yeah. i started noticing i'm just working just do my normal work throughout the day i'm i'm stress breathing for no reason right but to your body that's stress yeah it's, it's stress throughout your whole day just the, the way you're breathing you gotta breathe into your through your diaphragm into your belly and i was breathing up in my chest constantly just shallow breathing right. and and that's signaling to my body that, that we're in a stressful situation when I wasn't, I was just going about through my daily routine. And, and like, so that was a huge hint, like why I'm, I'm so fearful and, and almost anxious of the cold. It's like, that's a direction I needed to go. And yeah. that made a massive difference bigger than almost than a lot of other things. And then like, and fasting, I was like, it, I never, it never occurred to me as I, especially when I was younger, but like growing up and like, I'm, I'm six feet tall. I have huge growth spurts. I couldn't do without food. I need to grow and, and fuel my body kind of thing. And like, and then later on in life, I got to feel the work I got to do. I got a physical job. Mm-hmm. Never occurred to me to do a fast. But when I did, like I said, that was a triggering event that brought my hormones back. Yeah. And, and not only that, it's surprisingly easy. And, and later on, I, I, I listen to other people about fasting. You, you take some salt while you're fasting. It curbs your hunger and it keeps your strength up. So I can do a physical job. I can pick stones all day fasted as long as I have enough salt. If I start feeling shaky and weak, I consume a little extra salt and I'm good to go again. Like it's, And it's like the power that you feel realizing that you control over your diet because if you're out traveling or whatever else that you, you know, I can go two, three days without food, no problem. Right. So I don't have to eat this convenient food that's around at the airports or wherever else or 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 at a party, something like that. And yeah. you're feeling some hungry things like you can you can wait, you won't die. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, yeah, that's, it was like there's really much focusing on the simple things and looking at my own life for hints of what I should focus on first. But it's like the really the simple things like eating the whole foods getting some doing some 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 exercise it doesn't have to be crazy like you said like the most important thing about exercise is doing it consistently so just do what you love yeah. and for me it's more like the like the the, the animal type movement stuff like that just felt freeing for some reason and it wasn't in a masculine way it was much more in a softer way that just the self-expression only in an artistic way but for me, it, it built my body. It got me strong. It was easy for me to stay consistent. And it is a lot of healthy body move, movements, which applied really well to my physical job, surprisingly enough, to um, all the critics, especially my father out there seeing me exercising, saying like, why are you wasting all your energy? Because like, <laughs> it allowed me to learn how to move properly. And right. to move, it leads to less joint pain, less body aches and things like that. So then, yeah, it made a, Made, that made a really big difference too and the, all these all these habits that I, that I focus on one at a time then you make a habit around it becomes it becomes easy and normal to do those things on a day-to-day basis and now you just maintain those habits it becomes much easier yeah. so like you, you keep building those habits and and then uh, for me like the the final straw was was the fast that's great you know what when you brought up the breathing I, I you know that is so important. Like when I started to learn how to do s- slow breathing and I took some lessons and they taught you how to control your stress, how to control your body through breathing. Wow. What a difference it made. You know, you can be anywhere. You can be anywhere. And if you are conscious of the way you're breathing, you can change the way you feel. You can change the way 
your mind is thinking. You could change the way your body is feeling just by the way you're breathing. You know, people have done like, you know, I've showed people how to do methods of, of relaxation, breathing and as they're sitting in their seats at work when they're all stressed out. And, you know, it's amazing how impactful it's so important to know how to breathe because most people don't pay attention. But if we're in a stressful situation or if we're not feeling well, we should focus on our breathing, I think, and really learn the right way to breathe. And that's something that people should look into, I think. What do you feel? Yeah, it's, uh, it's always like if you told me that 10 years ago, I thought that sounds hokey. I'm not going to worry about that. <laughs> but like it, it made a big difference in in uh, in the, the average stress I felt throughout the day. Just, and it's not just like, yes, you you got your breathing and like being able to focus on that, but it's just like the, the awareness of what relaxed breathing feels like and what stressed breathing feels like. That was massive for me, just having that awareness. Yeah. And, and like, so like for me, that was the biggest impact I got from cold exposure is just the self-awareness of what stressed feels like and what relaxed feels like. Yeah. It's, I don't, I don't naturally have that much self-awareness. I'm not really very naturally, very self-critical and, and there's goods and bad things to that. Like, I'm not really, I don't, I don't feel the impact of, of, uh, of peer pressure the same way that some other people do, but like, yeah, it was the downside. Like I, I could, I could be horribly stressed and have no idea <laughs> that, aware, that awareness made a big difference. And, and just, yeah, like being aware and then being able to change your breathing at, because you practiced relaxed breathing and just be able to switch over. And like, for me too, like other things like that, I, I learned that techniques that I also use during those stressful, cold uh, periods is like, I would smile even though I, I'm i struggling, I would just force a big smile on my face. And it's like, it's hilarious. Some of the research that are out there, people just putting pencils in their mouth, which kind of fa forces a smile and then you feel better. Like it, it works. And yeah. Then, like you wouldn't think so. And especially people, especially like myself that are just like go-getters. It's like, you know, like, I don't got time for that kind of hokey stuff, but it's like, it does. It, it makes, it makes a difference. It makes a difference. And I feel like, you know, I hear people use that excuse. I don't have time. I don't have time, but we do have time. You know, all you need is five minutes of the day, 10 minutes of the day somewhere. If you can spare 15, even better, but all you need is a few minutes here and there and just little tweaks can make such a big difference in your life. Something better than nothing. And then what I always tell myself is that it's never a lack of time that's your issue for not making this change. It's a lack of priorities. Like how important is it? Maybe you got yes. to something in your life that's very important to you. Like you got a wedding coming up and you want to get a healthy body or like you have your, your kids or your grandkids or, or, or a massive dream that you might have, like chasing your dreams or creating that business. Like, and like that's, that's a, that's a real thing for me. I'm trying to improve the lives of farm animals. Like, and it's like, you got to, tie these little habits that you say i should add this to my life i don't got time or but it's not that at all it's a lack of priorities like what can i give up like i don't golf anymore I don't play video games forever but like <laughs> it's like it's like things that the that I, you can give up or like or you look on your phone it, it gives you a, a number every so often of the average amount of time you spend on, on your phone screen right. time a day like cut that in half and you can have hours more time. exactly Exactly. You know, I, you hit it right on the nose. It's really just an excuse because you don't prioritize what's important in your life. And you have to really think about what's important to you. You know, what do you really, how do you really want to feel? How do you really want to look? How do you really, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you look in the mirror, are you happy with who you see? Are you happy with the way you feel? And then you got to start just stop making excuses and just make little, you know, prioritize your time just a little better. And all you need is just a few minutes and miracles could happen. It's not going to happen right away, of course, you know, but baby steps, you know, that's part of the problem is because usually the things that we need to give up, give us immediate gratification and the things that we're trying to add in requires that delayed gratification, but those but those, that 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 delayed gratification, the impact is massive. So like that's the problem. So like you got you got to have a lot of self control in your life to to make that happen. But if you if you stick to it, it, it pays back for sure. Oh, it definitely does. It definitely does. Now, if you had to give a couple of takeaways before we go, what are some important factors that you want people to realize from this whole conversation? Because we tapped into a lot of important things and we you gave such such great advice today. Thank you so much for all the great advice you gave. 
But if you had to like sum it up, what are some things that you just want the audience to realize from this conversation? I think big picture is, yes, you need to look after your body, look after yourself to make yourself more effective at everything you do. And I think just, just thinking now, like if you are in that place where you're sick, your body has an amazing capacity to heal. And I think that that is, I think, maybe the, the biggest takeaway is like you, your body can heal if you get out of the way and stop feeding it junk and stop doom scrolling and stop sitting on the couch. Like these simple habits that you hear is it's not rocket science. Every basically everybody knows what you gotta do to be healthy. Like you gotta sleep enough, you gotta exercise just a little bit. It doesn't have to be a whole lot. It's just start that habit, eat yeah. your whole foods stay on the perimeter of the grocery store and then like and then from like once you get those 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 core habits in place like those those simple things in your life then you can really go in, into the weeds with it and then you can like you can really focus on like the quality of the food that i'm eating is, is it regeneratively raised do i know the farmer and stuff like that can i get more in touch with the food that i'm eating and like really respect your food and stuff like that like you can keep going down those roads like, with exercise too and like and like meditation and like you can keep it's endless the way you can go but just start with those those few simple habits that can make a massive massive difference oh yeah for sure and i got to i got to be a testimony to what you just said because i did those things and my my health and even my mentality did a whole turnaround so everything you just said is so true 100% true now, before we go, can you tell everybody your website, where they can find you and some of the services that you offer? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, my, my farm is Moral Eats, um, M-O-R-A-L-E-A-T-S.com is our website. And what we're trying to do with this business is like, I'm trying to improve the lives of farm animals through supply and demand. Supply and demand is so, so powerful. And uh, it's, it's a bigger and more powerful way to make an impact than writing those comments on social media and stuff like that or, or or anything else really supply and demand is so powerful and getting your voice heard so like that's what we're trying to do with moral eats and the best way to get in contact is like through our through our website you go and you sign up to our email list that's our favorite way to contact people and educate people and keep them up to date of, of what we're trying to do with moral eats and, and our mission of improving the lives of farm animals and furthering regenerative agriculture because like the beautiful thing beautiful thing about email is like i don't have to rely on the algorithm to put my 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 information in front of you it's like it's in your inbox either you delete it or you read it yeah so like, there so it's like but then beyond that oh and like and if you live in ontario which is where we farm like we will if you sign up to our email list you get the chance to to win free a free meat box and, and, a, and a sampler box of like of everything that we have we have our our, our pastured turkeys our grass-fed beef we have pastured pork we have uh wild and sustainably sourced wild seafood and we try to get like a whole smorgasbord of of uh, of products especially animal products because we're trying to improve the lives of farm animals and hopefully in the near future, we'll, you'll find some dairy products in there with some calf of foot dairy, which is just cows that are allowed, dairy cows are allowed to raise their own calf and 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 have that be a massive step forward too towards animal welfare and improving animal welfare. So like we have, we got big plans in the future, big dreams, but like beyond that, you can you can find us on, on Instagram and, and Facebook as as Moral Eats or uh, on TikTok and, and YouTube as uh, just my name, Sander Van Steve. Wow, this has been amazing. Thank you so much, Sander, for coming on the show today and sharing all this valuable information. I think you really, you know, explained through all the things that you shared today, how important it is to, you know, really focus on what we put in our bodies, how we take care of our overall health, you know, and really about putting ourselves on a pedestal because it's time that people show each other, not just show other people, but show themselves some self-love because really, you know, without taking care of yourself, you'll never be able to take care of the people around you. So you really have to focus on number one, and then you could focus on whatever else is important in your life. But, you know, health is so important and, and it really goes down to what, how we're treating our bodies and what we're putting in our bodies. And, you know, and it's so important that we really 
like we talked about, create that healthy lifestyle, you know, and make it, you know, break those bad habits and start creating those good habits and just making it a part of our lives. So you, you've, you've provided us with a, a, a wealth of information today. And I thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for the opportunity. Oh, you're very welcome. You have a great day. You too.